Hey everyone, I'm Sam Corris. I direct our Autonomous Tech and Robotics Research at ARC. Uh, we're doing a recap here, a mid-year review of our big ideas that we posted, when was that, back in, back in January, I guess. Um, we're gonna dive into the reusable rocket section here and, and see what's happened so far this year. What is the key takeaway here? This is a industry that is defined by a dramatic cost decline that's changing the business model, leading to a enormous opportunity. And so we'll walk through each one of those quickly. So if you look through the late 1990s through the early 2000s, rocket launch costs were actually increasing. There was a duopoly and in the US, uh, and then we were relying on Russia for launches as well, and costs just kept increasing. Uh, then you had SpaceX enter the scene and say, you know, we're going to reuse rockets. And everyone said, that's a crazy idea. It's not economic. Um, we've tried this before. It was way over budget. Uh, but SpaceX broke the mold here, landing the first rocket in 2015, reusing it in 2017. Uh, and since then, no other company has reused an orbital rocket. And so this is essentially a 10 year lead for SpaceX. And during that time, they've managed to consistently bring down launch costs as they've gotten better at refurbishing and reusing these rockets in shorter time spans. Uh, that's not to say there aren't people who are now, you know, sold on what they've done. You've got a handful of companies now that are uh, seeing the light that reusable is the key to dropping these launch costs. Uh, but so then, you know, what do these lower launch costs yeah, enable? Yeah, maybe I'll stop there and, and react. I think this is so profound and overlooked. Having a 10-year lead is a crazy thing in the world of technology. Having said that, right, what's going on this year, you've got Blue Origin. They launched their, their rocket uh, to orbit successfully on the first time. Uh, they didn't reuse it in any way. They didn't catch it. Um, you have Rocket Lab, who's you know, making progress on Neutron, uh, which is their attempt at a reusable rocket. And so still, you know, this is the year where everyone is trying to launch and reuse their own rockets a decade later. Um, but still, no one, no one has done it yet. Um, uh, they changed the business model and where people are choosing to send things in space. So if you looked back to, you know, the early 2000s, people were launching things to a geosynchronous orbit. Yeah, yeah. if you're familiar with space, you could probably skip ahead a minute. If, if not, I think this is a good primer. And so these are, you know, this is roughly 22,000 miles above the Earth, very far away. Uh, and so, you know, what's the benefit of that? You got a satellite up here, it covers a third of the Earth. You send up three of these massive, extremely expensive satellites, and you've got global coverage. Uh, the downside is, is really only good for broadcast because the amount of time it takes for data to go from the Earth to that satellite and back uh, is quite long. And so it's high latency, not great for a lot of applications. Um, and low Earth orbit, which is you know just a few hundred miles above the Earth, like right here, is now opened up by these declining launch costs. And why is that? Well, if you're putting a satellite right here, one, it's constantly moving relative to its place on the Earth. And since it's so close to the Earth, it's only covering a very small area. So instead of launching three for global coverage, uh, you need to launch dozens to thousands to tens of thousands, which would be quite uneconomic if launch costs were still high. So it's opened up this new area in space uh, with low latency, and that's that's what we see with Starlink, right? You can get incredible high-speed internet from these uh, LEO satellites that are circling the globe. Yeah, update here. I just a few weeks ago uh, got a Starlink Mini and tested it out for a week, and it really is incredible. Um, you know, setting up your Wi-Fi at home is harder than setting up a Starlink. Literally got the box, ordered it got it within an hour delivery from Best Buy, opened it up, plugged it into the wall. You point it at the sky, you go through the setup. Probably within, I'd say it probably took me 15 
to 20 minutes and it was all set and then was able to work for the rest of the week, no problem. Uh, and so this is opening up a huge business opportunity. This is what we were talking about. Uh, so we think this is a $130 billion in annual revenue opportunity. So huge opportunity, you know, that breaks up into uh, a handful of different things. Uh, the biggest item here is global broadband and direct to device capability. So what is direct to device capability? That's taking a smartphone uh, and having it be able to connect to a satellite. And this isn't necessarily replacing uh, a traditional telco today, uh, but it's giving you coverage, emergency text capability if you're off the grid. Uh, and we think, you know, it was actually surprising to us to see T-Mobile come out and say, you know, this is like 10 to $20 per month. We think that, you know, as this rolls out across the globe, we think, you know, this is going to be bundled into a lot of offerings over time. And we think, you know, at 50 cents a month, 8 billion, you know, cell phone subscribers are going to be paying this. And that's a $48 billion opportunity. And then the other is, you know, the Starlink opportunity, which is access to broadband for individuals, businesses, airlines. Um, and just on the two household side of it, we think that's a $40 billion opportunity. Then you add in RVs, boats, aircraft, ships, and that, and that makes up the difference getting us to that roughly $130 billion opportunity. So there you have it. Why is space so exciting? We've got cost declines for the first time. Uh, we've got those cost declines opening up a new area of space and a new business opportunity. And that business opportunity is in the $100 billion range. All right, the biggest update. So those are definitely the two biggest opportunities still that we see, the direct-to-device uh, and the broadband opportunity. Starlink and T-Mobile actually launched the service uh, in July. So it's out there. Um, people can, can use it. Uh, the biggest update I'd say from, from our side is we actually collaborated with Mach 33 and uh, our analyst Daniel McGuire spearheaded the open source valuation of SpaceX where we dive into this a lot more. So everyone should definitely check that out. And you know all of the things that I was speaking about in, in this video and big ideas is really uh, intricately done in, in that model to show how it can play out over the next handful of years. On a more concrete level, we've continued to see Starship testing, uh, some impressive uh, explosions and learnings there. Um, as I said earlier, right, you had Blue Origin, you had Rocket Lab, you had Lunar Landers uh, from uh, Intuitive Machines, and you had Firefly also with the Lunar Landers. Firefly went public, um, so another, another space name entering the public investable universe there. And I'd say all of these trends are continuing along. It will be, I mean, you know, a decade in, we're still waiting to see who is going to be reusable next. There is a space race heating up for the moon uh, with China being quite aggressive there. And so I do think, you know, defense has had its moment in this, uh, the last year, year and a half with everything happening geopolitically. Uh, but, you know, space, you know, people often lump those two together, space and defense. Uh, defense has definitely had a huge tailwind with those geopolitical issues, uh, but space has continued trucking along at a high speed. And I would expect this trend to continue um, as everyone pushes for uh, space, space supremacy on the defense side. Uh, and commercial advancement as well in low Earth orbit, on the moon, uh, and hopefully on Mars. So we'll give another update with Big Ideas 2026. And uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Even in an industry that you don't, you don't think moves as quickly as space, things are starting to move quite rapidly again.